The SIR infectious disease model describes how susceptible individuals can become infected when coming into contact with an infected person, and how infected individuals recover from the disease and thereafter become immune to getting the disease again. Alternatively, the infected people could die from the disease. As long as dead people or immune people cannot communicate the disease to others or catch the disease, they are removed from future consideration and have the same influence on the model dynamics. Therefore, we call the third class of individuals the removed class. We don't need to keep track of removed individuals, and so our model has only two state variables. S of t is the fraction of susceptible individuals, and I of t is the fraction of infected individuals at time t. The dynamics are described by a set of two coupled differential equations. The change in susceptibles is given by the equation ds dt equals minus alpha times s times i, where alpha is the infection rate parameter. This equation captures how a susceptible individual gets sick by contact with an infected individual. The change in infecteds is given by the equation di dt equals alpha times s times i minus mu times i. The first term reflects how susceptible individuals who got sick now join the infected class. The second term represents the rate at which infected individuals are removed from consideration, either by dying or recovering and becoming immune. Since the SIR model has two state variables, S and I, it is a two-dimensional system of autonomous differential equations. Let's see if we can determine the behavior of the model. First, let's set initial conditions. Since we have two variables, we need two initial conditions. Let's say we start off with 90% of the folks being susceptible and 10% infected, which means we are starting off with no one in the removed class. And to be concrete, let's give numerical values to the parameters alpha and mu, setting alpha to 2 and mu to 1 half. We rewrite our system of equations with these numerical values. To analyze the behavior of a single differential equation, we represented the state of the system using a phase line and determined where the state variable would increase and decrease. We use this information to sketch the solution of the dynamical system. Let's try to do this for our 2D system. With two state variables, a single phase line won't be enough. We need to represent the state of both S and I. Let's make two phase lines. We have one phase line to represent the value of s, and one phase line to represent the value of i. Since both s and i represent fractions of individuals, their valid range is between 0 and 1. We can plot our initial conditions with s equals 0 0.9 and i equals 0 0.1. The solution to the dynamical system will be two functions, s of t and i of t which gives the evolution of the fraction of susceptible and infected individuals over time t. Our goal is to ascertain what these functions look like. Let's see if we can sketch the functions. To sketch the solutions, we'll make two plots, one of s and one of i versus time t. Just like when sketching the evolution of a single differential equation, we will be primarily interested in determining when the state variables are increasing and decreasing, and less concerned with getting the detailed shape of the solution correct. Let's see what we can figure out. When s is 0 0.9 and i is 0 0.1, are the state variables increasing or decreasing? To answer this question, we turn to our differential equations, which tell us the rates of change of these variables. According to the differential equation, the change in s ds dt, at time 0 is negative 2 times s of 0 times i of 0. Since we have values for s of 0 and i of 0, we can calculate that s prime of 0 is negative 2 times 0 0.9 times 0 0.1, which equals negative 0 0.18. The number of susceptibles is decreasing, which makes sense, as some are becoming infected. We draw a leftward arrow on the phase line and start the curve s of t with a downward slope. Let's also calculate the rate of change of i. i prime of 0 is 2 times s of 0 times i of 0 minus 0 0.5 times i of 0, which equals 2 times 0 0.9 times 0 0.1 minus 0 0.18.
minus 0 0.5 times 0 0.1, which equals 0 0.13. The number of infected individuals is increasing. Although some infecteds are recovering, the rate at which new susceptibles are getting sick is larger, so we have a net gain in infecteds. It looks like the disease is getting worse. We draw a rightward arrow on the phase line and start the curve I of t with an upward slope. What will happen as we evolve time further? For a single autonomous differential equation, the state variables would always keep moving in the same direction. The only question was whether or not they would slow down and stop. Let's see if the two-dimensional system will behave in the same way. The equation for s looks simpler, so we'll start there. The equation is ds dt equals negative 2si. The variables s and i are fractions of individuals, so they are always between 0 and 1. In particular, they are always non-negative. This means that ds dt can never be positive. It will always be negative or 0. The number of susceptibles always decreases or stays the same. That makes sense with our model, as individuals can never rejoin the susceptible pool once they get sick. We can draw leftward arrows along our S phase line. The state variable S of t is always decreasing or staying constant. The only question is, what might cause S to stay constant? When is ds dt equal to zero? The expression negative 2si is zero if either S equals zero or I equals zero. The number of susceptibles will stop decreasing if we run out of either susceptibles or infecteds. We can represent the case when we run out of susceptibles on the phase line. That occurs at the left when s equals zero. It's not so clear how to represent the possibility that we run out of infectives on this phase line. It could occur for any value of s. If there are no infected people, the number of susceptibles will stay constant, no matter what its value is. There doesn't seem to be a nice way to denote these possible stopping points on the phase line, as these stopping points could be anywhere. Let's give up on that idea. We do have enough information to give a rough sketch of the evolution of S of t, however. We know that S will continue to decrease as more susceptibles become infected. We continue the curve S of t downward. It can't keep going downward forever, though, as we know we have to stop before we run out of susceptibles. The curve will level off somewhere, either at S equals zero or some other value of S if we run out of infected individuals before we run out of susceptibles. Now, what about those infected individuals? We know that I of t starts by increasing. At the beginning, susceptible individuals are getting sick faster than infected individuals are recovering, leading to a net increase in the number of infected individuals. Clearly, though, this can't keep happening forever. I of t could be never larger than 1, since it represents the fraction of infected individuals. At some point, the growth of the number of infecteds must stop. What is the condition that will cause this growth to stop? We can determine the answer from the differential equation. If the number of infectives stops growing, what does this mean about di dt? We are looking for the condition where di dt equals zero. This growth rate is zero when 2si minus 0.5i equals zero. When this condition is satisfied, the rate at which susceptibles become infected precisely balances the rate of recovery so that the number of infected individuals remains constant. Let's solve this condition to determine for what value of i this occurs. We can factor out an i and write the condition as i times the quantity 2s minus 0.5 equals zero. Either i equals zero or 2s minus 0 0.5 equals 0. The growth of the number of infected stops when either i equals 0 or s equals 0 0.25. We conclude that the growth of infected will stop when either we run out of infected individuals, i equals 0, or the fraction of susceptibles drops to one quarter. Since i is increasing, it doesn't look like the condition i equals 0 will stop the growth. The ending of the growth of i won't be determined by the value of i, rather by the value of s, when it reaches one quarter. The phase line representation is not working out very well, 
as we don't have a way to represent the stopping point on the I phase line. We can't represent where di dt equals zero on the I phase line. All hope is not lost, though, as we do have a representation of the time course, s of t, of the fraction of susceptibles. Of course, the time course of s of t does depend on the value of i of t that we are trying to figure out. But let's not worry about circular reasoning right now. We're just trying to develop some intuition about what is happening. Let's just plow ahead and see what happens. If we somehow knew how s of t evolves with time, we could look up and see where it hits the critical value s of t equals 0.25. Let's say that it occurs right here. If this is true, then we know that i of t should increase up to this point and stop increasing when it reaches it. We can draw the rightward arrows on the phase line and draw the solution curve i of t. What happens to the number of infected individuals for later times? Does i of t stay constant at this level? Let's look at di dt again. Since i prime of t equals i times the quantity 2s minus 0 0.5, i prime of t was positive when s of t was larger than one quarter. What happens after s of t drops below one quarter? This means that 2s is smaller than one half, so i prime of t is negative. i of t should start decreasing. The point where the derivative hit zero is a local maximum of i of t. The solution i of t turns around and begins to decrease back down towards zero. If we were to try to represent this behavior on the phase line, we'd have to put leftward arrows at the same locations where we just put rightward arrows. The phase line representation is not very useful for determining the evolution of i of t. Unlike a single differential equation, a system of two differential equations can turn around and move in both directions across the same point on the phase line. We'll need to think of something better to represent the solution. Well. Never mind that for now. We can still determine the rough behavior of our system, which is what we set out to do. After s of t drops below one quarter, i of t will decrease. With less than a quarter of the population susceptible, the rate of new infections will be slower than the recovery, and the number of infected individuals will shrink. The course of the disease progression changed because of a dwindling supply of people to infect. When will i of t stop decreasing? If s of t is less than one quarter, the only way for i prime of t to be zero is if i of t is zero. The number of infectives will decrease towards zero and the infection dwindles away. We can finish our plot of the solution of i of t. How severe was the epidemic? One way to tell is whether or not all susceptible folks got infected. Unfortunately, we cannot determine the answer from these methods. If s of t approached zero at the end, then the epidemic was as bad as it gets. If, on the other hand, s of t stayed fairly large, then many folks escaped the disease. We need more sophisticated techniques to determine the actual outcome. But from our analysis, we can at least determine that the number of infected individuals initially increased, then decreased down to zero. At the same time, the number of susceptibles decreased down to some unknown value.